welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, my name is Joe. Today, it's actually not a welcome back to the greenhouse, but it is a welcome to Berlin. I'm actually standing here in the center of the capital of Germany, in front of the Brandenburg Gate. And in today's, <laughs> Maybe you can hear in the background, my Scottish friends are playing up the pipes to mark the occasion. The occasion being that I'd actually like to invite you to a tour of the world famous botanical gardens here in Berlin, and specifically to take a look at their cactus and succulent collections. Come on, let's go. So this is where they then join on to the next succulent greenhouse. Don't know if you can actually see this, but the sun is slowly burning its way through the fog outside. So I think we will actually get a sunny and warm morning here in the greenhouses very soon as well. and shining straight onto the golden barrel cacti, lightening them up to show their wonderful golden colors. And now we're in the second of the greenhouses and you can see behind me already, this one is dedicated to plants from the Americas, North America, Central America, South America, and the various areas on the American continents that actually have cacti and other succulents. Let's just move in here. Needless to say, this is one of the largest cactus and other succulent collections grown in a greenhouse in the world. Some beautiful epiphytic cacti in bloom here. This is Epiphyllum hookery. Let me just check out the label. What does it say? Epiphyllum hookery subspecies pitieri there's a whole collection of epiphytic cacti in this section here there's Aresias selenicereus epiphyllum and I guess, as one of the examples of convergent evolution, they've actually planted a Euphorbia cipolisi here from eastern Brazil. So this is a one of the few rare Euphorbias from the Brazilian Euphorbia. Sereus grandi costatus and also Sereus forbesi, which is relatively common in our collections as well. Some flowers up there. Let's 
Los Rios for Basie. Number of uh, there's a beautiful Parodia Leninghausi, used to be called, sometimes still sold as Noto Cactus Leninghausi. There's a Claystocactus Buchtieni. A beautiful specimen of a Claystocactus Micropetalus with still green buds, but also some flowers. They're very unusually shaped flowers. These are the buds. Echinopsis, Echinopsis caloflora, beautiful green these plants have. Echinopsis oxygona, and there is a Echeveria runioni flowering here. Look at those Brasilia Pontias. Amazing. They're entire trees. Brasilia Pontias with flowers and fruit. Trichocereus, Mora Pontias. Here's another Echinopsis. Echinopsis crossicaulis. Rasicaulis and Stetsonia corine from Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina. So in this section here, they've actually got the South American province of cacti represented because what they've done is they've actually subdivided the cactus greenhouse into the main provinces, if you like, the main areas that cacti occur in uh, the Americas. And moving into the centerpiece of the collection, this is a group of Euphorbia, sorry, of Echinocactus gruzonis, of course, the golden barrel cactus. And uh, the one at the back here is well over a hundred years old. Look at them, it's unbelievable. The size of them. Interestingly, they have flowered. You can see the dried flowers from previous years. This year, it seems like they've not actually been in bloom yet. I wonder whether there's a story behind that. I'm sure there is. Parodia, Magnifica. And from one Echinocactus gruzoni group to another. Four more gruzonis wonderful specimens. This one has recently flowered. It is late August so a lot of the cacti by now, especially given that the summer here in Europe was so hot and sunny, most of the cacti will already have actually finished their blooming season. It's a pretty unique architecture for the greenhouse construction here and you can see that all the glass is actually arranged 
not as planar, but actually as curved glass. And that's to help diffuse the light and also to, in that sense, avoid sunburn to the cacti. And some very nice Pachycereus, Pachycereus marginatus from Mexico. It's quite funny, they've actually planted these uh, Pachycereuses here in a row also to show how very often these uh, cacti are actually planted in their uh, uh, original countries and in other countries where they've been exported to as uh, fences, as natural fences. <clears throat> here we've got a number of Pereschias Pereschia saccharosa, so these are leaf-bearing cacti, but look at those spines, so leaves and spines, basically these are sort of hybrid cacti, early cacti forms, it's believed that have got a sort of a hybrid version of leaves, they are very thick fleshy leaves, uh, very succulent, and uh, they already have spines developed as well like the uh, cacti that you're probably more familiar with that you know have spines only no more fleshy leaves now here's some creeping cacti selenicereus hanging down this wall and uh what's this here oh this is a interesting interesting piece here. This is a skeleton basically of a saguaro, Carnegia gigantea. It's uh, a skeleton of a died off saguaro, really to demonstrate how the woody fibers of these uh, cacti uh, that you know you normally don't see behind the green epidermis of these plants, how uh, in order to actually hold up these massive cacti, the uh, plant itself has very, basically a woody skeleton, a woody framework to uh, help support these massive plants. Very interesting and very nice that they've actually put this here. Now, glancing over, this greenhouse is just massive, I must say, very, very impressive. There's a whole bunch of uh, columnar cacti here, and uh, just moving across, this looks like a collection of ferrocacti, ferrocactus piliferis, with a bud coming there, wonderful plant. Oh look, there's a little wasp feeding off the nectar on the uh, on the flower. I don't know if you can see it. It's actually a bit like one of the shorts I recently posted on a wasp feeding off uh, the uh, nectar of some of the succulents in my greenhouse. It is really candy for the eyes of a cactus hobbyist, and you can easily spend hours in here at least i could <laughs> don't know about you this is ferrocactus hystrix very nice large group and uh, there's astrophytums here Ooh, this is a beautiful specimen of an Astrophytum myria stigma variation nudum. So the spineless version or the spineless form of the myria stigma, the Astrophytum myria stigma. Nice collection of mammalarias. Mammalaria gemini spina. 
various sedums, echeverias. So these are actually all plants in this section that are Mexican plants that grow in the limestone regions of Mexico. So astrophytums, ferrocacti, and a bunch of echeverias. There's some very nice large Pachycereus pringles, these large columnar giants here, moving all the way up towards the roof of the uh, greenhouse. And staying up there, this here is a uh, Pilosocereus. Pilosocereus. What does it say on the label? Chrysacanthus. Or astrophytums. Astrophytum ornatum. Flowering. Beautiful flower of astrophytum ornatum. Look at the size of that plant. Wonderful. And these large columnar cacti are Neobuxbaumia, polylofa, polylofa, Neobuxbaumia, polylofa. Look at this incredible and they've had a lot of blooms in this season you can see towering about two meters above me uh, lots of seed pods lots of fruit basically ready to be harvested in a few months time still buzzing so to speak with insects loads of bees wasps and other insects that are uh, on and about the uh, fruits and flowers Mammalaria, Geminispina Another beautiful mammalaria group. Quite a number of agaves, agave serulata, puncia, microdasis, again a well known cactus for many smaller collections. Behind this group of wonderful cloisto cacti. Look at this one here, Pleistocactus tupizensis. Wow. What you're hearing, this sort of this this noise in the background, that's one of the vents of the ventilation system that they have here installed. And uh, you know, just shows how important moving air and ventilation is for cacti. As I've stressed in several of my other videos, it is really, really important always that cacti, you know, are, are in an area of, of moving air. So always have a ventilation system of some kind in your collection to make sure that you've got air movement rather than stagnant air, especially when temperatures really go up in the summer months in the heat. Cacti can bear very high temperatures, but mainly when that's in combination with moving air. And uh, if they're in stagnant air, they will burn much, much easier than uh, if they're actually standing in well aerated moving air. Let's take a look at these columnar cacti here. There's a Trichocereus tercecki from Argentina, Bolivia. Another giant among the cacti, the columnar cacti. Wow. And then over here, 
This is, uh, these are more Pleistocacti, Hyalacanthus, Pleistocactus Hyalacanthus, it says on the uh, name tag here. Clearly, these plants, the whole collection has just been watered overnight. Plants are actually still quite wet. Another reason for actually having the uh, ventilation system on at full blast today. It's nice and cool outside, but also for the plants to dry off during the day, that uh, ventilation really helps. Now here, let's take a look at these blue, bluish colored, wonderful columnar cacti, Browningia, Browningia hertlingiana. Wow, look at those spines and the coloration of these cacti. And they just keep going and going and going. These must be about five meters, maybe six meters in height. Just keeps going. And uh, another Trichocereus candicans. Then some uh, Espostoas, Espostoa lanata, from northern Peru. Gorgeous plants, gorgeous cacti. And they're all in super good health and condition here. I must say, this is incredibly impressive the state of the collection of cacti here in the greenhouses in Berlin. This is another Trichocereus, Trichocereus tercecoides, tercecoides. That's a bit of a tongue twister there. Another Espostua lanata. This one has also recently been flowering. Well, as I say, recently means a few weeks back because cacti have had a ball of a summer here in uh, Germany and most of Europe really this summer. More Trichocereus orurensis. Again, fantastic spine coloration. Those spines definitely protecting that plant very well in nature. I'm 100% sure of that. Oh, and here's another Pereschia, another one of those uh, leaf bearing cacti. This one is actually, let me see what the what the label says. Okay, so this is the, it says Caribbean rose cactus. And uh, this is quite interesting. There's a whole bunch of uh, info charts. And uh, this one here refers to sort of early forms of cacti originating species, if you like, of the very large family of Cactacea. All the labels, by the way, are uh, they're in uh, they're bilingually, so in, in German and in English. Certainly reflects the large, large number of visitors from all over the world that uh, now flock to Berlin and uh, also to this wonderful green oasis in the middle of this uh, bustling city. So the botanical gardens and the greenhouses, really a tranquil refugium, if you like. What's this here? Sereus, Sereus Uruguayanus. That's a 
sort of a monstro's form uh, of the Cereus Peruvianus. This one is massive. This is more than three, almost four meters in height. And uh, it's got quite some corking there at the base. That's when the green parts of the stem start to sort of become brownish colored and more woody, if you like very often to help support cacti that are columnar in growth. You can see these areas of uh, corking. It's not a disease, it's not due to pests or so. That's a perfectly normal, natural phenomenon. You can see corking on a massive scale, if you like, with bark development on this Apuntia. This is Apuntia bergeriana, a massive uh, specimen which um, has actually become a sort of invasive species for the last hundred years or so, at least in the Mediterranean and uh, Southern European regions. And equally, you've probably read, maybe heard about the invasive nature of Apuntias in uh, Australia, for instance. So this Apuntia, as I was saying, this is all corking, so the stem actually becomes pretty much a bark and uh, that's there to help support the plant which really you know takes on the shape of a tree look at this massive specimen amazingly from the ground floor level where most of the plants we've been seeing now are actually growing. There is a stairway that goes up to a higher level in the greenhouses. Let's go. It is really a absolutely breathtaking experience, <laughs> not just from walking the few stairs. That's not what I mean. I mean, the collection is just Awesome, absolutely awesome. Let me just give you an idea, a view from the top, so to speak. From up here on the upper terrace, you can actually, you've got a great view of the main collection, the main greenhouse collection that we walked through earlier. Oh, there's a place to cactus wintry that almost escaped my attention again grown in a hanging basket and in full bloom up here near the uh, top of the greenhouse nice and warm echinopsis ariesi very popular commonly grown cactus in our collections ferrocacti again here's the here's the view down on the main cactus collection from up here, from the upper terrace. And the nice thing is here, about four or five meters above the level we were walking on at the base, we're actually sort of uh, at the same level as many of the columnar cacti are. So we can actually get a great view of them.
Look at that group of Echinocactus grizzoni and ferrocacti down there, lighting up in the sun now. This is where they've got plants displayed in raised beds. selection of Crassulacea, Euphorbias. This is where they're actually also in this cabinet showing the whole concept of convergent evolution where you've got cacti next to non-cacti, so Euphorbia obesa in this case. We've got Euphorbia horrida in the background next to a Echinocactus platyacanthus and you've got Crassula clineas very well made here another beautiful Euphorbia Confinalis, this one. And then, of course, as part of the convergent evolution theme, Hechtias, Echeverias, and Aloes, next to Agaves. So here's the Agave Victoria Regine next to and that's from the Americas of course it's uh, this this one is from northern Mexico and then on the other side of the Atlantic we've got the aloes totally unrelated to the agaves but quite similar in their morphology this is an Aloe Brumii. So Echinopsis. Oh, they've also got a. Um, they're showing a couple of the famous cactus collectors and botanists here from Berlin and the Berlin area that have contributed over the last two and more centuries to the uh, advancement of science around the family of Cactaceae and other succulents. Here's a beautiful Echinocactus grizzoni forma nudum. Oh, there's some wonderful Copiapoas here. Copiapoa hazeltoniana. Wow, look at that. Wonderful Trichocereus pasicana here. I have to stop and show you this one as well. It's hard to actually just uh, walk through at speed if you're a cactus and succulent nerd and enthusiast like myself and I guess like quite a number of you uh, viewers so I must say you can easily spend many hours here this is Apuncia Galapagaya from the Galapagos Islands Really beautiful Opuntia. But not one I think that I would want to necessarily grow in my small greenhouse. I certainly wouldn't want to compete for space with it anywhere. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video on the botanical gardens, specifically the cactus and succulent houses of the 
Berlin Botanical Gardens in Dahlem. I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did then as always I'd really appreciate if you gave me a thumbs up, a like for this video and even better if you actually decided to subscribe to my channel. And I hope to see you all back again soon. Take care and happy growing.